Welcome to VM Source's video, Upgrading to VMware vSphere 5, performing an orchestrated upgrade for your entire VMware vSphere 4.x environment. I'm John Borhek, Lead Solutions Architect for VM Sources. You can reach me at john at vmsources.com or by calling 1 215 764 6442 extension 1001. VM Sources is a leading provider of VMware virtualization solutions with offices in Philadelphia, Phoenix, and Los Angeles. What we're going to do today is upgrade vCenter Server, upgrade the VMware vSphere Update Manager, import the ESXi 5 ISO images, create an upgrade baseline, perform an orchestrated upgrade of all of our ESX or ESXi 4.x servers, and then check for compliance against the upgrade baseline we created earlier. Let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you'll probably want to download some documentation so that you can follow along with what I'm doing on the screen. Go ahead and open up a web browser and go to our website, www.vmsources.com. Then go to Resources. Scroll down to VM Sources White Papers and download VMware vSphere 4.x to VMware vSphere 5 Upgrade Guide. This document details each of the steps required to perform an orchestrated upgrade from VMware vSphere 4.x to vSphere 5. You'll be able to use this document to perform an upgrade in your own environment at your own pace. Let's go ahead and log in to our vSphere 4.x environment. Our vCenter server prepared specifically for this demonstration is called vCenter-Server. We're going to go ahead and use Windows Session credentials to log in. Now we've logged into our vSphere 4.x environment for two reasons. First of all, I'd like to demonstrate that, yes, in fact, we are running ESXi 4.1 on all of our servers. And we're running on vCenter Server 4.1 using the VMware vSphere Client 4.1. The other reason we've logged into our VMware vSphere 4.1 environment is to create a snapshot on our vCenter Server. In creating a snapshot on our vCenter Server, we're going to protect its state as a vCenter 4.1 server. In case anything goes wrong, we'll be able to roll it back. No harm done. OK, our snapshot's completed. Now you might be tempted to open up a virtual machine remote console window to your vCenter server right here and perform the upgrade. That would be a mistake. We're actually logged in using vCenter server, and therefore we don't want to use this as a mechanism for connection while we're performing an upgrade on this. What we're going to do instead is start the Microsoft Terminal Server Client, mstsc.exe, otherwise known as Remote Desktop, and we're going to connect to our vCenter server. And we're going to go ahead and log on. Now, because we're connected via remote desktop, we don't have to worry about being disconnected during the upgrade process. We're going to access our vSphere 5 binaries using a network share. You can acquire these binaries from VMware directly. When you download the vCenter server, it comes as a zipped package, vmware-vimsetup-all. We've already extracted the zip file into a folder to save time. We're simply going to copy that folder out onto our desktop. We'll open up the folder, and we're going to double-click Auto Run. The VMware vSphere 5.0 installer looks somewhat different than it did in previous versions. The first thing we're going to do is start by selecting vCenter Server and then clicking Install. Of course. I'm going to choose English. All in all, this is a really easy upgrade process. It's already noticed that an earlier version of vCenter Server is already installed on this computer and will be upgraded to vCenter 5.0. 
excellent. Patents will agree to the terms of the license agreement. We are not going to enter a license key here. We're just going to use the evaluation. So what it's saying here is the license you're going to need for vCenter 5 is different from the license you're using under vCenter 4. Since we're using the evaluation edition, this is not going to apply to us. The update manager is not going to be compatible with the new version of vCenter Server. We're going to have to upgrade that separately. Yes, I would like to upgrade the existing vCenter database. I would like to automatically upgrade all of the vCenter agents on each ESX server in the vCenter server's inventory. I'm going to go ahead and enter the password for my service account. I'm going to allow vCenter to install to the default folder locations. I'm not going to make any changes to the ports. I'm installing a small environment. I do not need to increase the number of ephemeral ports available, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. And we're off and running. Okay, all in all a remarkably easy process. Now that the vCenter upgrade is completed, I'm going to resist the temptation to log in directly with the vSphere client and verify my upgrade. Instead, I'm going to upgrade the Update Manager. English, of course. It recognizes an earlier version of the Update Manager. So here are our first choices with regard to the Update Manager. Would we like to delete the old host upgrade files? The answer is almost universally yes. And would we like to download updates? The answer to that is also almost universally yes. So we're going to leave the default options alone. We are going to enter our password. Yes, we would like to upgrade the Update Manager database. When I click that I have taken a backup of the existing Update Manager database, what I'm really thinking about is the snapshot that we took before we started the entire process. While a snapshot and a backup are two entirely different things, if the upgrade process goes sideways, we'll be able to revert to our older version of both vCenter Server and the vSphere Update Manager. Okay, it's warning us that the setup must update files or services that cannot be updated while the system is running. If you choose to continue, a reboot will be required to complete the setup. In my experience, that's not actually the case, but we'll go ahead and acknowledge that anyway. Okay, now that our upgrade of the VMware vSphere Update Manager has completed, we're going to restart our vCenter server, just to be sure. This will, of course, disconnect our remote desktop connection. Now that we've waited about a minute for vSphere to restart, we're going to go ahead and double-click on the vSphere client. Remember, we haven't upgraded the vSphere client yet. We'll go ahead and choose Login. And it detects automatically that we're connecting to a new version of the VMware vCenter server we'll go ahead and run the installer. The upgrade process for the VMware vSphere client is much like any other upgrade process that we've done so far. One notable aspect to the vSphere client upgrade process is that we're not actually replacing the vSphere client for version 4.x. 
Instead, we're installing a brand new version of the VMware vSphere Client 5.0 alongside the old version so that you'll be able to simultaneously connect to both old ESX and vCenter servers and newer ESX and vCenter servers. Now that the VMware vSphere Client version 5.0 has been installed, we're going to go ahead and log into our vCenter server. This is the conclusion of part one of our video. Please continue watching part two of upgrading VMware vSphere 4.x to vSphere 5.0.